hello wellness warriors i hope you're doing wonderful um i am doing okay look at these bags because my husband has a coronavirus so it's been a little crazy to be honest um i've been through a lot in the past five days and uh i'm really really tired uh so i'm using all the scope the scoping skills all the coping skills that i have look at look at my hair it's like it like fell out after postpartum and it's growing back uh yay which is a good thing but i have all this baby hairs everywhere um so i'm definitely going through a lot and um I'm definitely checking my mental health, which I think it's super important. And uh, I think it's something that we should all be doing, especially with this year and everything that is happening. I mean, guys, this is legit like the hardest year that most people have ever lived, uh, especially with all the just all the the trauma we're living the cumulative trauma that we're going through i mean it's a lot and it's no joke and i feel like a lot of people sometimes don't realize um how this impacts people's mental health uh my husband having the coronavirus and he has it mild like he just has like he has the flu that's how he feels like he has a flu he has really bad headaches though but he's quarantined and so everything is falling on me and like people don't realize that this totally affects an entire uh unit like the entire family is not just the person who has the coronavirus and so i wanted to talk about some signs um that we should all look out for to make sure that your mental health is not uh declining so one of the first things and i have them written down here because if not i'll forget one of the things is that your energy level begins to decrease so you we need to be very careful about um paying attention like okay you know sometimes we're, we're more tired and i discussed this like it's important to take naps especially when we're going through all of this but if you find yourself that you were lacking energy and that you're taking lots of naps or that you don't want to get out of bed that's definitely a red flag so it's like danger danger uh irritability is a huge one so if you find yourself being irritable uh and just snapping at people and not really being able to tolerate certain things as well as you usually do that's usually a red flag when it comes to depression uh also anxiety because that can come out as uh irritability but definitely depression like if you're irritable most of the time most likely you could be depressed so FYI, big one. Um, so everything looks darker than it is. So like you feel like you're trapped in in this horrible situation and you feel like there's no outing and no one can help you out of the hole. And so usually when we start falling uh, into depression and anxiety starts increasing, we start being more negative about life. Uh, once you start seeing that your thoughts are being more negative and those are the patterns you're falling into, that's a red flag. That means that something is happening. Uh, so it's important to be aware of that as well. Um, you struggle to engage in anything besides your stressors, which I think it's a huge one that most people miss. I know that today I was like, oh, you know what? I am just engaging in my stressors. Like I need to take some intentional time for joy. So I read to my child um, and I also decided I was gonna put some fun things in my hair. So I did that and later on I'm gonna go on a walk with them around the neighborhood because I have to be intentional to not engage in just my stressors. Um, and so when that begins to happen, usually is definitely a red sign that something's wrong. Um, you feel extremely overwhelmed by your responsibilities. And it's not just like a regular overwhelm. That's like you feel like even just going to get the mail can become something that you don't feel like you can do. Uh, sending an email or doing your notes for work, making a phone call. I mean, just those tasks can be so daunting. Like, I cannot do this. Like, I feel like I cannot do this. 
that is a red flag. Uh, when when everyday daily things that that are maybe you know it can be annoying, they become like impossible just to think about. Uh, so definitely a red flag. Um, so be careful with that. Changes in sleep patterns. If you have insomnia all of a sudden and you find yourself not being able to go to bed or waking up in the middle of the night or not being able to wake up in the mornings and really struggling with that and you needing to sleep like for, I don't know, like you're sleeping more than you usually. I don't want to give a number because we all sleep different hours, but let's say you sleep eight hours a night and all of a sudden you find yourself sleeping 12 hours and you cannot get out of bed and you just really don't want to um, do anything else besides laying in bed, that's huge. Or maybe you don't want to sleep and it's like two in the morning and you're still up um, and you're avoiding going to sleep and you usually go to bed at like 10 or 11. So those are also red flags to look out for. Uh, you get hung up or you get triggered really quickly more than usual and you find yourself being triggered by things that usually wouldn't trigger you and they're bothering you um and you cannot let them go also you start to kind of daydream i'm escaping your life and so with and that can look different it can be through your phone it can be through a lot of netflix it can be through uh just like mindless uh thought just like literally just daydreaming uh because you don't want to be present in your life um i feel like in in our generation in this time it looks through our phone like most we're just on our phone like numbing away because we want to disconnect from life or present situation i always tell people if you're on your phone a lot that's a red flag and it's usually a sign of depression uh, and you're trying to avoid life and so just keep keep that in mind and speak with your provider and many of you are thinking probably like what do you mean speak with my provider get a therapist Ta -da! i said it yes get yourself a therapist especially during this year like y'all if you didn't have an anxiety disorder you probably already have one by now so get yourself a therapist anyway for real though get yourself a therapist uh talk with them process this and do something so that your computer your phone is not um not taking you away from your life and not becoming your uh how do you say it your crutch i guess uh so yes make sure that you are keeping that and then my last one is that you start withdrawing from friends and you start to isolate and you start to kind of like get close uh, closer you know you close you you're closing off to the world and you start avoiding uh social situations with right now i know we can't get together socially but like you start not communicating with people and you start not you know you stop texting you stop calling you stop zooming so it's important to make sure that you are keeping um connection we thrive in connection guys it's important that you keep your connections in order for you not to have a spiral with your mental health Okay, I just wanted to talk about those red flags. And uh, if you see that you're having some, then address them with your therapist. Uh, I hope that you are having a, you know what? I'm not even going to say a beautiful day. I hope you're having an okay day. If you're having more than that, then awesome. And if you're not, go and do something nice for yourself. Okay, guys, I'm going to go make my husband some hot tea uh, and then feed the babies and then go back to work. Uh... Pray for me, y'all, because I need it. This week is gonna like continue to be insane as the past five days. So, whoop, whoop. We are Mexicans, not Mexicans.